So when Yusek invited me, I said, I'm not available in the morning, but he kept insisting on having me. Uh, we're good friends. In fact, I think our children are better friends together. Uh, his daughter is the closest to my daughter, and his son is also very close to my son. So they are both at, uh, yeah, in the same grade and playing golf together. So uh, <laughs> I feel obliged to come. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. Um, so on behalf of President Schlesel and Provost Martha Pollack, I want to welcome you all to the University of Michigan and to this very interesting conference. I came right before lunch, so I heard a few minutes of Tim's presentation. Uh, from a uh, mechanical engineering perspective, uh, I don't know anything about neuroscience or neurotechnologies. Uh, I found that very interesting as well. So you can see uh, definitely I think the topic is generating a lot of interest. Understanding the working of the human brains is a uh, interdisciplinary challenge. I think many of us will find working in this area very exciting. In fact, the National Academy of Engineering uh, lists uh, the reverse engineering of the brain as one of the greatest challenges for engineering and science in the next several decades. Uh, they identify 14 grand challenges, so one of this is reverse engineering the brain. To be able to reverse engineer something, you have to understand how it works, right? So I think that is understandable that we need science, we need technologies to help us understand how the pieces fit in. I also think the University of Michigan is uniquely positioned to do the work uh, of understanding how the brain works and play a role in the reverse engineering of the human brain. Uh, we made some investment in the last year and a half. Uh, I just want to tell you a little bit on some of the investment. Uh, about a year and a half ago, we uh, put together a group uh, that's the Michigan Brain Initiative uh, Planning Group. Uh, we call this My Brain, so M-I, uh, not M-Y, uh, so Michigan. So anything we do, we always start with an M. Uh, we invest in data science, so it's Michigan Institute for Data Science, so MIDAS. We invest in transportation. We build a testing facility. It's called MCD. So anything that doesn't have an M, you have to think is at Michigan. So anyway, my brain uh, initiative, uh, we received 31 proposals and involving 74 faculty members across the university, uh, many different disciplines. Uh, quite often, uh, the team uh, are very diverse. That means you can have medicine from biology, working with somebody else in engineering or social sciences and so on. So that is a very organic culture at the University of Michigan. That means faculty collaborating across different disciplines. Um, I think you all know under UNSEC's leadership, uh, U of M get awarded a uh, NSF grant uh, for international research and education. So that's the Partnership for International Research and Education in Neurotechnologies. Uh, through this particular program, faculty coming from different institutions, domestic and international, working with our faculty in research. And through this partnership, we're also creating opportunities for faculty and students uh, to learn from others, travel internationally. So I think the educational opportunities are also tremendous. Uh, a few months back, we received support from the uh, Kavli Foundation for supporting what's called a dream team pilot in the University of Michigan that is also a collaborative program where through the support with the University of Michigan cost share, we are able to invite researchers from other institutions to joining us in the research collaboration. So I think we're bringing faculty from others to Michigan for the collaboration. We also have invested in a few areas that are related to neuroscience uh, that may not directly tie to neuroscience, but I would say they are definitely related. Uh, one example of this is the data science initiative. Uh, in September last year, we announced a $100 million investment. Um, 
research, education, industrial outreach, and also infrastructure. So we think data science, as many of you know, is the fourth mode of discovery. Uh, in the old days, we derive equations, we do experiment. So those are the two classic approach of research. And then with computing, then computational discovery and computational science became the third mode. And then data science now is the fourth mode for discovery. We think the methodologies that we develop for data science will play a role in our understanding uh, of how the brain works as well. I mean, as we develop sensors and probes, there will be a lot of data where we need to analyze and understand. So the University of Michigan is one of the largest research institutions in the US. Our uh, annual research expenditure is at about $1.3 billion. Uh, so we are uh, ranked second to Johns Hopkins. Um, Johns Hopkins is first. Uh, they spend about $2.1 billion each year. Uh, but 1.1 billion is actually a direct uh, support from the DOD to the applied physics lab. And their competitive grant, internal investment, and all those together is actually less than us if you don't count the applied physics lab's <laughs> expenditure. Um, so to keep our ranking, to keep our status as one of the largest and most renowned research university, we have to constantly identify new areas, invest seed money in those areas, and then hopefully faculty will go out and then get many times in return what we invested in the research. So that's a system where I take a lot of leadership and responsibilities in cultivating faculty, uh, in identifying new areas, and then we invest in those new areas. Now, being such a large university, the challenge is to be able to know what is really truly exciting, right? Uh, our areas are so diverse, so I rely on the faculty to tell me what we do and how can we make what we invest a truly Michigan initiative. Everyone invests in neuroscience, everyone invests in data science, everyone invests in precision medicine, for example. So how can we invest in areas where we can take a leadership role and make sure that the leadership that we achieve, the leadership position we achieve, continue to be maintained. So that is the challenge where I think the president, provost, and I spend the time try to get a good handle on, okay? So invest in areas where we can really achieve a leadership position and then maintain that leadership position. I think the Michigan probe that the work that King has done and that Yunsei has done, I think is close to that. Of course, we continue to invest in the area. Hopefully, after your conference, uh, with many of your input, we will confirm and reaffirm that this is an area where the University of Michigan need to invest in. So uh, I think the conference is very timely, not only for scientific purposes, but also for my understanding of where the area is going. Uh, I understand we have many scientists, engineers, and faculty from the basic sciences. Uh, all of you are here together to assess where we are technology-wise and where we are in terms of neuroscience-wise. So thank you again for inviting me. Uh, I hope you continue your very engaging discussions and have a productive conference. Thank you. But, but longer times, a day or, or multiple days or a month, the freezing was reduced, suggesting that this area is important in the expression at a later time point. So which areas?